our scripture this morning comes to us from the First Nations version here, uh, which was written by Native Americans and some of whom were United Methodists. So it might be an unfamiliar version, but uh, very, very good as well. It reads like this. When Creator sets free, saw the crowd, he went back up to the mountainside and sat down there to teach his people. His followers came to him there, so he took a deep breath, opened his mouth, and began to share his wisdom with them and teach them how to see the Creator's good road. Creator's blessings rest on the poor, the ones with the broken spirits. The good road from above is theirs to walk. The Creator's blessing rests on the ones who walk a trail of tears, for he will wipe the tears from their eyes and comfort them. The Creator's blessings rest on the ones who walk softly and in a humble manner. The earth, land, and sky will welcome them and always be their home. Creator's blessings rest on the ones who hunger and thirst for wrongs to be made right again. They will eat and drink until they are full. Creator's blessing rests on the ones who are merciful and kind to others. Their kindness will find its way back to them, full circle. Here ends the reading. The God of the blessing to the hearing, the reading, and the living of the Holy Word. Amen. Well, I am glad to be joining you all again online here uh, in giving today's message. As I was preparing for today, uh, we've been following the, the Beatitudes. In today's uh, more contemporary version, I read uh, from the Native American um, gospel there, but we are more familiar with the words maybe, Blessed are those who are merciful, for they will receive mercy. So I was thinking about what happens in my household on a daily basis before we go to school. There's always a lot of rustle and bustle with my two girls getting ready. My uh, youngest is in kindergarten and my eldest is in third grade. And they're very fixated on what's fair, what's just, and uh, what's merciful nowadays. The younger one has to feed the cat in the morning. The older one feeds the dog and lets the dog outside. So they have their responsibilities. But just the other day, the youngest one was running a little bit behind in getting herself ready. So I decided to give her help in feeding the cat. I told her, I said, Scarlett, don't worry. You stay focused on getting your hair combed and brushed and ready. I'll feed the cat. And lo and behold, what did I hear from downstairs from the older one? Dad, why are you feeding the cat for her? Will, will you feed the dog for me too? I said, no, you're already down there. Go ahead and feed the dog. But in her mind, in her eight-year-old, soon be nine-year-old mind, what I was doing in helping her sister, well, that's, that's not just. That's not fair. I was, in my mind, trying to be helpful, maybe show my daughter a little bit of mercy, I was really more worried about the cat eating, uh, to be honest. I don't want her to go, go without food. Uh, but it upset the nine-year-old. It really set things off. Today's scripture comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, with the Beatitudes there, which we are familiar with, I hope. But we've been talking about whose world is really upside down. Is it the world that Jesus describes in the Beatitudes, or is it our world? You know, when we look at Jesus, and we look at the stories that he told us and the examples he gave us, we see many indications of when Jesus showed mercy. I remember the woman who was going to be stoned, and Jesus stopped that and said, you without sin cast the first stone. Thinking about this week's lectionary text, which we aren't following in this season, but you might be familiar with the story. It's about Jesus and the disciples walking, and they came upon a blind man, and Jesus bent down and grabbed the dirt and spit into it and rubbed it on his eyes. But the disciples were upset. People were upset. Why, why would you heal this man? Clearly, if he was blind, he did something wrong. He deserved it. Or maybe somebody in his family did something wrong. They had sinned, and therefore, you know, why, why would you show mercy? Why would you show healing to a person like this, Jesus? And I, I uh, hope some of you were able to join us in person last week for worship. Uh, we had Fram Stanley Frankhart, who is a wonderful man here, given the message. Uh, he works with young Christian professionals, but he uh, works with folks who are entering uh, society back from incarceration. And he shared a story from his own life that when he was a, a young person at school, he uh, like I'm sure many of us did, I can attest I did, he, he, he cheated 
on a test. And he had looked over at the girl's paper and uh, for the spelling test, and lo and behold, the, the same words that she spelled right, he spelled right, and the words that she missed, he missed. And the teacher called him in and, and accused him of this cheating. And of course, you know, he said he played it cool and didn't really admit to it. But the teacher threatened him to call his probation officer. And lo and behold, she called the probation officer. Probation officer came there after school and picked him up. And because it was a violation of his probation to, to be, uh, you know, not following the rules at school, he got locked up for several months when he was a young person. And that helped set him up on a spiral of, of incarceration. Now, praise God, he, he learned about Jesus while he was in prison, and now one's a wonderful ministry, has a beautiful family, and was able to share a, a good message with us last week. But what would be merciful in that situation for that teacher? Was that really justice carried out? To be honest, a lot of what I do around here at Crossroads is working uh, with justice ministries like our food pantry um, and, and like some of the stuff we're doing on Canton for All People with getting people housing. And so many times I hear, well, why don't they just do X, Y, or Z? Making it sound super easy. If they just call this number, I'm sure they could get help. Or if they would just go to this place, that place, I'm sure they could get it figured out. The reality is it's, it's not that easy, nor is it that merciful to have people go all over the city just to get their basic needs met. You know, I'm thinking about, uh, in addition to St Stanley, who's here with Young Christian Professionals, we have Jamar Fleming, who's here with his Mav Tomorrow, working with men, uh, young men who are in between, you know, teetering on that, on that precipice there, maybe going to jail or staying in school, and, and he shows them a better way, a, a different way. He goes out there and meets them and works with their lawyers, and their case managers, and their teachers, and their principals, trying to keep them from entering into that, that prison system. You see, what's always merciful is not always fair, and what is always just isn't always fair, but it certainly can be merciful. Pastor Don shared with us that it's amazing, and I agree with him, that when you watch news, I, I, I tell you about every month, there must be somebody up there having a fit that the Ten Commandments are being removed from some public space. But you never see the same people arguing for the Beatitudes we put up at the courthouse, or the Beatitudes we put up at the prosecutor's office, or something like that. What does it mean to show mercy? What does it mean to offer forgiveness and grace even when we don't deserve it? Every week in, in church, we pray the Lord's Prayer, and I hope you pray the Lord's Prayer at home as well. But think about it. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. It's based off the amount of forgiveness that we're willing to offer that we ourselves will receive God's forgiveness. I think it's the same way with mercy. And it's difficult, no doubt, but we have a mighty leader in Jesus Christ to show us the way. And one of the best stories I think he gave us about showing mercy is when he talked about the Samaritan who was on the side of the road, beat up, injured, robbed. Three men passed by. Only one man helped him. And when asked who was the neighbor to that man, they all responded, the one who showed him mercy. So I encourage you in this season of Lent to examine the ways that you are showing mercy, the ways that you live out that kindness, that forgiveness, and join me in being a neighbor to our community. Amen.